Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to Mass Effect 2. Or, well, maybe not, Mel. Welcome back. Because <laughs> last time I recorded, I was having some troubles. And uh, I just kind of cut it off because I noticed the screen kept tearing over and over again. Um, so actually, this might not be a new part. Haha, <laughs> I'll, I'll edit that out. But um, anyway, so I just went back because for some reason I was thinking that I missed something at the Thane Tower or the Dante's Towers where we got Thane. Because I felt like there was an interaction with a Solarian that we missed, so I thought we maybe missed one, but I don't think we did. Commander, Morden requests to see you. I think what it is, actually, when I was thinking about it, this one. Yes, from Jerry, Jerry. Greetings, Commander Shepard. Liar Sonia gave me your contact information. I was one of the cleaning crew in the Dante's Towers. You helped me get out of there. According to Sonia, you also found Thane. He took down some of the Eclipse Mercs trying to have gun us down, and I wondered if you could pass along my thanks. The way he moved. One was dead before they even knew he was there. He snapped another's neck and then shot a third, all in the space of a few heartbeats. It was incredible. He moved like a dancer, grace and power in constant motion. Seeing him changed my life. I woke up woke up something in me I didn't fully underst I don't fully understand yet. I don't know what I'm going to do, but Solarian lives are too short to waste as custodians, especially when there's so much else out there. I'm going to find something that lets me capture what I saw in him, that beauty, that aesthetic perfection. I'm also going to buy some nice clothes. So if you could tell him that, or just whatever parts of that you think appropriate, I'd appreciate it. Sincerely, Jeered. This is one of my favorite things about acquiring Thane, is this little, like, I thought for some reason, I was like, oh, I must have missed an interaction with a Solarian, but then... I was like, oh wait, it was actually a letter. And just the way he says, he moved like a dancer, grace and power and constant motion. And this is where I, con like, every time I see a Solarian doing something like a custodian, this is what I read that made me think, yeah, like, your lives are too short. Solarian, it's, like, life is too short. But Solarian lives especially are too short to waste as custodians. And I just love these as I'm going to find something that lets me capture what I saw in him, that beauty, that aesthetic perfection. And I'm going to buy some nice clothes, which is a good start. Like, you know, like I actually, I used to just wear like sweats all the time. And now like, I, even when I'm like editing all day, I just put on my comfiest pair of jeans because, and like a butt, like just like a plaid button up shirt or something, you know, it's something to make me feel like I'm actually doing something, you know, like that I'm being productive. Like, even if I don't go out, I just make sure to at least put clothes on like I'm going to, you know? So, so I really like that email. I really, it's one of my favorites. One of my favorite, like, little side emails that you get from, from missions and stuff. Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, we've deliberated and analyzed the data you recovered from the relay on Terrath. The resources mined on Terrath were being sent to Zadaban, presumably for use in the weapons manufacture. It's clear that the Blood Pack is planning a large-scale invasion. Disrupting the operation on Zadaban will go a long way towards delaying or preventing this invasion from Cerberus Command. Okay, so that explains it, because I remember last time I was like, what the freak is going on with this planet? Like, I don't understand. Well, usually they can pick up at least kind of what's going down with these, like, the little emails, but I... Like, there was parts of it, but it was also like, well, what were they doing there? How did they get there? And who were they being mad at? And, like, it was kind of weird. But, okay. Okay. Oh, wait, no, no, no. That's not what I meant to do. Nope, we did, we did that. Upgrades. Okay, oh, these are the upgrades I've gotten. I remember... It's been a while again, because I, I only upload these every other day, so I'm like... I just kind of do try to remember what I've been doing. I want to get the shotgun extra rounds, but I needed one more shotgun damage and more platinum. I probably won't make you guys suffer through the platinum or the the, the mining, but um. Oh, also I looked up. All right. I guess I haven't gone on the internet to like ask it a question and be like, hey, how do I fix this? But I went on every single thing in the extras and the downloadable content. I went to my purchase history, to my downloadable content history. I cannot find Zaid anywhere. I cannot find his DLC pack anywhere. And I thought it was kind of, it was free with the Mass Effect 2. But for some reason, like I won, well, I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't really want him when I played last time. So I just didn't download it. And I don't know if it's just like lost to me or what but yeah it was a little bit weird I'm not quite sure what happened with that to be honest so if you guys know it may be a little bit 
until I can get a chance to, like, the, well, the, before you guys will see any changes. Um, I'm not going to play too far ahead right now. I'm just going to play for a couple hours probably. But, but yeah. So if you, if you know anything about that, let me know. I Hopefully I'll remember to look it up. But, um, okay, so we should probably... We should probably talk to everyone about their little personal missions, though. Shepard, important news. No, you're busy. Have to deal with the collectors. Planning attack. Too important to wait. Just receiving data. Still processing, analyzing likely scenarios. Not sure how to begin. Too much intel. Okay. You remember our talk? My work on genophage modification? Yeah. You stopped the Krogan adaptation to the genophage. Which is huge! Part of a team. Scientists, all different types. Blood pack mercenaries captured former team member. Malin, last seen on Tuchanka, might... Torture him, make example. Recovering Maitland would be a personal favor to me. Yeah, this this is a key you think question. Found out your team updated the genophage. Unclear. No hmm. way to determine until we get to Tuchanka. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why else they would capture a Solarian. I mean, they don't like Solarians, but I don't think unless it's a radical group or something. Most of them just kind of do whatever on their own, you know, the like Krogans. We'll go to Tuchanka and see if we can find your team member. Appreciate it. My assistant, my student, want to see him safe. Of course. Malin last seen outside Erdnot territory. Scouts might have seen blood pack. Talk to them or clan chief. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got that. It'll be fine. What was it? Oh, investigate upgrades. Uh, I think... Oh, she wanted me to talk to... Miranda? What, who was that? Oh, no, it was Morden who wanted to talk to me. Let's see... I don't know what to feel about Grunt. My psych reports were for Oak here. We have... I get the feeling he just doesn't care about... Oh, anything, is this? Including who lives or dies. Okay, I, I don't know if we've heard is that or not. Is there anything I should know? Nothing right now. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. I'll be here if you need anything. Okay, so we've talked to everybody about their personal missions. Um, yeah, no, I, I kind of left in a hurry last time because I was just... I was so fed up with it. It was... the. The 3.0 update was really screwing me over, but I, I, I think I fixed it. Commander. Um, okay, so we have talked to Joker. What do you think about the people we're picking up? Well, about the ones you went out with last. Not like Kasumi, but... Mm -hmm. And Thane seems like the strong, sensitive, murdering type. <laughs> you know, those are always great to have around, a real cuddler. Yeah. It's just my opinion, though. There's really no need to go spreading around. Strong, That's sensitive, murdering tech. See you, Commander. All right, maybe we'll go run down and talk to people. I don't think... I think at this point it's kind of um, pointless because I've gotten everyone's personal missions, and so they're going to be like, we got to do this quick, you know, but I'll double-check really quick. Does he... Oh, okay, he can't see. Okay, it looks kind of weird. I hope we can clear up what's going on with the Gurns back, Commander. Doubt my father's alive after all this time. Was there anything else? Just eager to get going. Right. Uh, do you want to talk? I'm looking at the computer because I feel like the editing or the recording might be acting up. I'm not sure. I'm more interested in just... Already? To... I'm okay. not big on forcing these talks, Shepard. Let's right, do this right. later. Okay, we'll bye. talk later. Commander. Man, I hate being distracted with stuff I think is going on over there. Okay. Alright, well let's go try talking to Thane really quick since he's the newest no one. For you, Commander. And we have done a couple of things since we talked to him last. We could poke Kasumi too. Yeah, I'm just not I'm not sure I, I haven't I haven't quite gotten to that point in the editing yet. I've gotten pretty close, but I didn't get quite to there because I started to like freak out about that Solarian thing. And so I actually came on and I was like trying to like figure out if I had done something wrong or right or something. And so I'm like, well, since it's on, I'll just play for a little bit. But but I won't play too far. So if there was something we were in the middle of, I'll get back to it. Na -na -na -na. <laughs> a few minutes to talk? Certainly. Hmm. Oh, okay, cool, cool. 
Good, good. This is good. If you don't mind my saying, you don't really oh, seem like an okay. assassin. You've spent too much time fighting thugs who think custom painted armor makes them <laughs> The Hammer trained my body for this role since I was six years old. You've been killing since you were six? Of course not. I didn't make my first kill until I was twelve. They were training me. I was not to be used and thrown away. I was an investment. Uh, I think it does sound... The way he's saying it makes it... You, you understand what he's saying, like... They were invested emotionally, you know, in, in his in his development, mental, emotional, physical development. He wasn't, he was a person, you know, it wasn't a tool. I mean, I don't know, kind of. You were a child, not an investment. I've given you the wrong idea. They valued me, yes, as a resource, but also as a person. They regretted their need hmm. for me. I wonder if that's true, you know. The Hanar? Excessively polite, worship the Protheans. <laughs> they don't seem the type who train assassins. Every species trains assassins. The Hanar are only unusual in that they need other species to do the killing for them. They have a strong grip and natural toxins, but have you ever seen one move quickly outside of water or fire a gun? Only Blasto! Why did your parents agree to this? The agreement was made under the compact. It was an honor for our family. The compact? We live on the Hanar homeworld because they rescued us, some of us, from extinction. We owe them our lives. That is the compact. It's crazy. Oh, I think... I feel like the record's doing weird things. Shoot. Um, anyway, if it's not screwing up, we'll see, but, um... The fact that they were only able to rescue such a small number, like 37,000 people, or 375,000 Drell, like, it's an extreme bottleneck situation for, like, genetics-wise, but there were billions of Drell on their home world, and they were only able to save that many. I find it crazy that nobody else helped to intervene, like, this council. I'm not sure when this was exactly, though. I'm not sure how, because he was born to a family that was... I don't know if his family was, his parents were from the home world, or if it's just been, if it's been a lot. I think it's been longer than that. But, um, let me, let me pause this really quick. Okay, everything seems to be alright now. Alright, I am gonna try to tone down being all freaking out about Thane, because at this point, Shep, that's not how Shepard is, or was, when I was playing her the first time. We were kind of feeling things out. Or, well, she's just trying to feel him out, because... He's probably one of the biggest threats on this ship, sort of, you know? But, like, at the same time, he's a, he's a mystery, right? Like, I was very intrigued by him, and, and I think she is, too, because, again, he's not like most assassins that she knows of, you know what I mean? He's a true professional. I probably would actually call him, oh, what do they call it, um, wet work? Like, I think, in a, at least in a book I read once, it, just, it differentiated between assassins, bounty hunters, and, like, wet, people who did, like, wet work or whatever. I can't remember. But, though, I guess the people who do wet work are, I can't remember their name exactly. I think they have a different name. But they are, like, the true professional killers. Um, they don't just do it for flair or anything, so... Uh, but he's got this, like, strange sense of peace and, like, but I also isolation and solitude um, for a man who works in his in his line of work. And, like, I, she's, and I've, I've never, like, at this point, I've never met a Drell, you know? Like, she's perhaps has met a Drell, but maybe not. They're obviously a very rare species. Like, they don't, there's not many of them. There's billions of humans in the galaxy, billions of Zasari and Turians. There's, like, at this point now, there's maybe a million, maybe, I would think, if they've been, they've been reproducing, and I think that they don't have high mortality rates. Um, but, yeah, no, he's just, he's an enigma, he's interesting, he's, he's willing to talk, but he's still got this, like, sense of, like, mystery to him, which is, it's always interesting, right? You're curious. Human beings... And I think most sentient creatures in this scenario are curious, you know, but she's also got a professional interest in somebody that she's hired. I'm going to stop talking about that because this is boring. What exactly are the terms of the compact? There are many things the Hanar can't do, even with mechanical aid. 
they ask Drell to assist them. See, it doesn't... It's not how it is, though, but... And that... No, I don't want to say that, but... Uh, it's nice to do all the dialogue. Well, it's not always, but it can be. We'll see. This can't be legal. They made your whole race into slaves. Don't insult me, Shepard. Yeah. Anyone can refuse to serve. Few do. We owe our existence to the Hanar. We are proud to repay the debt. I think many wouldn't, but... I mean, it depends. It also, it's like... It's, is a willing slave better than an unwilling slave type thing? It's like, depending on how you're brought up, you can think that being oppressed is the greatest thing ever and, like, that your dictator is, like, the most wonderful, coolest person on the planet or whatever, you know? So it's a matter of upbringing where they may... I don't, they, they don't worship the Hanner. I think they do respect them. I do think that not necessarily the children or the descendants should feel obligated to help the Hanar. Um, especially because I do kind of question, and there's nothing that indicates this in the game, I don't think, but I do kind of question the Hanar motives. I mean, I think a lot of them did legitimately want to save the Drell, but they, they haven't given them, like, their own planet. They don't have an option to leave, so what else are they going to do? They're stuck on this Hanar homeworld. Might as well help them out. You know what I mean? And... I don't know. The Hanar are pretty... They're in, they're in Enigma as well. So it's almost like if they're too good to be true. I think maybe that's why. I'm just a little bit like, you know, I don't know about this, you know, because they are almost too good to be true. And it, you do meet one that goes bad. But other than that, they're just so... sincere. It's like, ah, you know... Why was your race going extinct? Overpopulation. That must sound trite to you. Humans developed mass effect drive before the problem became Yeah, extinct. if only. The world, Rakana, had few resources. We hadn't even developed fusion power when the soil began to fail from overuse and pollution. The Hanar found us a century ago. Mm. They sent hundreds of a ships, century. evacuated thousands of us. Billions more had to be left behind. Well, how did they decide who got to be on the on the ships, you know? Usually, it would, I mean, I don't know, it depends on how the Hanar place value, because they would have to start, I mean, maybe they just took whoever got there first, but, which I would kind of think, if we're looking at the Hanar objectively, like, with, with the way that they are portrayed, that that would be the case. They would take whoever could come. And I know he said something about how, like, everyone was killing each other off and everything, so maybe only the peaceful ones were left or whatever, but it could be women and children, like, you know, like, like, who knows, who knows what kind of genetic, like, bottleneck that they, that the Drell have gone through now. And I believe they have, they have a normal 80-year lifespan. Maybe I'm just saying, he's, like, gonna say all this, I, I, I'm sure. What's the state of Rakana now? Do you read your philosophers? A man named Thomas Hobbes? Yes, I did. all the world is overcharged with inhabitants, and the last remedy of all is war. Which provideth for every man by victory or death. As Rakana died around them, my people slaughtered each other for mouthfuls of water, crumbs of food. That's what happens. It's not just humans. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that makes sense. So, it's like the only, but the people who would be available to be saved would be a, a limited number of people. Um,. It, but the other thing that I really like, because I've read Thomas Hobbes before, and he's a bear to get through, but it's like, he starts quoting, like, human philosophers at me. It's like, he has obviously, he's very well read. Like, he's he knows deeply his own lore and traditions, but he's also looked at other species. Other, other species. So, that that's, like, super cool. It's like, oh my gosh, like, this man is well well read which is an attractive feature in a person but it's like he, he looks beyond his own self his own species to understand others you know I admit part of it's probably just for his assassin work but I think the other part of it is because it's something to do and he's curious but you don't kill for the Hanar anymore you're freelance what changed I was asleep for a long time yes I paid no attention to what my body was asked to uh, do ah here we then. go 
Laser dot trembles on the skull. One finger twitch. He dies. Then, the smell of spice on the spring wind. Sunset colored eyes defiant in the scope. The laser dances away. My apologies. Drell slip into memory so easily. It's so cool! Is that one of your assassinations? Uh, yes. Perhaps we can discuss it later. I've wasted too much of your time. Woo! So we got more information. More information on the Drell and on Thane. So we kind of led him into that conversation. You might not know where that's going, but it, it's, it's very interesting where it goes. But how, we got there by asking... So we asked all about the culture and stuff, but then he's like, you're freelance now, what changed? So he hasn't been working for the Hanar for a while, it seems. And he might clarify on that later, but... Do you need something? You mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all. Drell and Hannah, are you all religion and other There's topic? something else I'd like to talk about. Ask. Uh... Have a few minutes to talk? Later. I'd like to consider what we've already discussed. Indeed. I should go. I shall return to my meditations. Enjoy. <laughs> what, what? Oh, freaking the books, they keep kind of wigging me out. I'm like, what's over there to look at? <laughs> People are talking out there, eh. and I hear it all. You do. Not a lot of people go in and out of Dr. Chakwa's office, other than to get medical attention, I mean. I hear you shared a drink with her. That's really nice. I imagine with all that's happened, old friends are becoming a luxury. Gabby and Ken would make a great <laughs> couple. I just doubt they'll ever realize it. Uh, sorry, that's probably loud. <sighs> the ever constant battle of Whoop, first person! Ever constant battle of trying to rearrange my headset after it's been messed with. Okay. So we should be good to go. Yeah, because we basically got every. Do we talk to Grunt? Grunt might need to be spoken to. We need to speak. Speak to Grunt. Pow. Oh, freaking, I'm so excited for all of this. This is so... Thane is one of the most interesting characters. Like, he, the Drell are new, for one thing. And, like, you don't know anything about them. There's this completely new species that are introduced in Mass Effect 2. I don't believe they're talked about or mentioned at all in Mass Effect 1. Did you hear that we are sharing our deck with a Krogan? Well, ain't that peachy. <laughs> They're so funny. But, I mean, everybody else is interesting, but I think he's the... Yeah, he's the only new one. Shepard. Just checking in. I can see Humans you. talk too okay, much. Okay, bye! Like That's all for now. Shepard. Brent. Ah! Fucking... Ah! <laughs> it's okay, I'm just trying to be cool, Grunt. Uh, nope, didn't work. All right, well, let's go shopping. I know it probably feels like that's all we've been doing, but we are halfway, and I don't have as many upgrades as I was like. Sentinels are nearly indestructible. Well, not when I started playing as one. I vaguely remember having a very difficult time with the tech armor because it wasn't a charge thing. It was just like, tech armor's on. And I freaking felt like the Dragonborn, though. If you get the, um... Oh my gosh, which DLC pack is it? Um, not Hearthstone. Not Hearthstone. Uh, Hearthfire. Uh, I can't remember, but one of the DLC packs, you get to go to a really cool place and you find a really cool power up thing, like a new shout thing that's really cool. Uh, and you. It looks kind of like that. It's cool. Alright, we are outside. We're somewhere. Okay, we are gonna go to the Citadel! It's kind of difficult to see my little ship sometimes. I feel like it was a lot easier to see. Oh, that's Ilium. 
And I think we get a free refill on gas. If we go to the Citadel. I've been experimenting with my volume again. Hopefully, I'm hoping it's working out for you guys. Hehehe. <laughs> So gorgeous. Pew. Not the people. People aren't gorgeous. Someday I'll have to make a, an adept or biotic, strictly biotic person. That would be fun. It's kind of weird. I think if you're a biotic, though, like there should be, a, there like should be like dialogue. Where you're like, yeah, life was hard growing up biotic, but but there isn't. Uh, we'll take Grunt. We'll take uh, we'll take Grunt. Yeah. Not quite sure if I've brought Grunt to the Citadel yet. Ooh. Um. Okay, what should we do? Hmm. Well, the health doesn't increase, like, or it's, it's plus 50% regardless. But is a 15 points per second health regeneration, uh, but a 10 point increase in weapon damage if you go to Warlord. I think I'm gonna go with Warlord because he doesn't die too much, so. Yeah, that's good. Pain! So I have already brought him out once. I just, I can't remember. Can't remember Diddly Squat! Okay, and we, we're good on that. We don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Do I usually click past this? It's like every time. Gunnery Chief. Look, there's some Hanar. He stands like kind of awkwardly. There is something funny here, I think. Yeah. The tightest in the galaxy. I see no fewer than 14 fatal flaws a skilled assassin could exploit. Eight of them existed when I was here ten years ago. Hmm. Interesting. I love that. It's like, oh man, like, things are never as secure as you'd like to think, you know? Uh, I know sometimes they, depending, there's always like new, not always, but sometimes new little quests to do. There's like, there's sometimes, at one point, there's like these two Asari sitting here that you can interact with. Kind of like new Citadel fetch quest type things. It'd be cool if Grunt would say something, but I guess he doesn't really, I mean, he probably knows, but he doesn't have experience with the fact that, okay, there they are, that, uh, Krogan are generally not allowed in Greetings, many parts of the citadel. You will find many excellent ships for sale here. Only slightly used. Only yes. slightly used. Thank you. Let's see. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my ah! store in the citadel. Do I even have any money? Oh, good, I do. Uh, okay, we'll wait on that one. I know, I need to not just buy stuff for myself. I need Shepard, to buy things. This is my favorite store on the citadel. For everyone like to make sure everyone's abilities are top-notch you know I don't think there's any point in going down there at this point we just got a refund in exchange now it's told to pick up more ramen wait, 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 wait. Get a oh! <laughs> this one passes for food out here my tastes run more along the lines of edible looks like worms <laughs> dead ones is this a human thing? 
I'll pass. I'll eat almost anything, but I stress almost. Wow, you're like the pickiest Krogan ever. I didn't realize that's funny because there's something in Mass Effect 3, I guess, that calls out to that a little bit. Sort of. That's funny. Nice. And I need to pay attention in the various areas. Oh, we went down, so we need to go up. Ugh. I just take the rest. Yeah, ramen. It's a delicacy back on Earth. Yeah, Grunt, you would love it, guaranteed. Oh, we should we should go talk, stop and talk to Anderson really quick, especially since Horizon happened just recently. Making sure nothing weird. Man, you do have a nice office. Not very secure, but a nice office. Something I can do for you, Shepard? Caden Alenko was on Horizon. He said he was looking into Cerberus. I know. I approved the mission. We had to find out if they were behind the missing colonists. I couldn't tell anyone without compromising the investigation. I'm sorry. I, I'm gonna ask that. I'm not sure what it's gonna do, though. I thought we were friends. Never expected you to go behind my back. We didn't know about you at the time. And I wouldn't have told you if I did. What if the elusive man was manipulating you? Lying he to had you? to take these into the account. The report actually confirmed your story. I still don't trust Cerberus. But they were right about the collectors abducting the colonists. Unfortunately, Alanko didn't find anything to convince the Council that the Reapers are behind this. Or even that they exist. Yeah. Of the last couple years treated you. I feel like we need to end things Knowing on a nice but note. I know how that is, so I keep trying. I better go. My door is always open. Thanks, Anderson. I do appreciate it. I do, I do. What are what's this? Oh, that's where the council pops up. Okay. I don't know if listening to the Galactic news will get me questy things. Maybe I should look up where to get the shotgun. I think I need shotgun damage. And I need damage protection if I want to get the skin weave thing. I hope you guys are enjoying this. It seems like everybody is. I just, I know, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to play when you know what certain things will do and you're just like kind of rushing through to get to other certain things and so you lose track of what you're doing and that's a bad idea. I'm Commander Shepard. Yeah. This is my favorite store on the Citadel. Okay. Sniper, heavy pistol, okay, maybe I will get that. I don't know how much that is. I mean, I know how much that is, but I only have enough for like two and then I'm broke. Oh my gosh. I don't even, I don't think I have anything that I need the heavy pistol damage for at this point, you know? It may just be something that I have to scan. Like the damage protection stuff. Isn't there. There's got to be something else. That's all there is to buy here. Uh, um. The dog, nothing to buy there. There's Citadel souvenirs. I guess we can look at it, see if there's anything else. Oh, I forgot. We can go to Ilium. That's a good one. Well, well, what was that? Can I still talk to you guys? You think there's any place on board we could buy a fish? They don't like live animals on the Citadel. Wasted life support capacity, <laughs> they say. Uh, they have fish, though, right here. 
Let's see. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite story. Because I'm Michelle. Ooh, model sovereign. Yes, give it to me. Thessie and sunfish. Sure. Let's get some Thessie and sunfish. Gosh dang it, and we'll go. We'll go. We'll go. Place. Uh, to my to my room and feed them hopefully let's go back I forgot is that where we well, it wasn't where we ended off the last one but there was one where I decided to like I feel like there was a part where I like decided we were gonna do something else like we were like on Ilium and then I was like I was like, oh, we're gonna keep going on Ilium, and then I was like, nope, just kidding, we're not. So, I feel like I've been jumping around, but part of the thing is that I feel really bad if I don't get all my companions right off the bat. And then, but then once I get them all, it's like, now you can end the game, and it's like, basically, and I'm like, but, but, and but. I feel like once I get all of them, that's not the time I need to end it. That's the time I really need to, like, start going out and, like, like getting everybody, like, trained or, you know, like, not trained, but, like, you know, working on everybody's skills or something. I don't know. But that green planet was cool, Tarith. Okay, let's go to Ilium once more. Did I just... Yes, I did. Nope, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Nope, nope, okay. Leave orbit. Yeah, yeah, we gotta do this the correct way. Holy crap. The game is like, would you hurry up and do things that you need to check off already? Um, Ilium. Maybe we'll... I don't remember what order people... I mean, Kasumi gave me her mission first, so I should probably do hers first. Like, you know, like it would only be polite. But... Oh, I need to go do my armor, like, in the in the ship, in my room, too. I need to go make sure I've got what I want, like, because I, I think I've bought some things, and, or I've upgraded some things. I don't think the upgrades I have to worry about, but I did buy some things that I'll have to check out. But I don't get to do Mass Effect 3. You can buy some custom armor. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Wait, no, who have we not brought? I don't think we bought, brought Grunt to... Oh, no, okay, hang on. Hang on. Oh, okay. Remove. This will be interesting. <laughs> if they chatted, it would be interesting, but I don't... They. What's kind of a bummer in the Mass Effect games is they don't talk to each other. They used to... Well, they in the first one they did. Oh, I totally forgot. Oh, because we did do hers at one point, but then, and then I was like, nope, never mind. <laughs> that was a bad idea. Let's do that. Yeah. Hmm. Primal Vanguard or Primal Adept? Interesting. Uh, let's not heighten her. Let's do the biotic abilities. Health is the same. Eh, yeah, I mean, it's not too much, you know what I mean? But we'll do Primal Adept. Okay. That, I think we're all good. Hello! Jack looks so cool. Like, th having these two walk- Oh my gosh, I didn't realize he did that! He, like, messes with his collar? That's so funny. Uh, having these two behind me, right next to me, would be uh, very interesting indeed. People would be sure to the keep their distance. I really hate that. It's freaking loud. There's a freaking radio here, just so freaking loud. I wish you could just go wander around. I know it would be like impossible, but it would be so cool. So. Flipping cool. Are you shorting prefabs? 
Oh, we've started that conversation over. Oh, yeah! Okay, so this is a place that you can just talk to people. Lots of money here. Soft people who'd make good victims. Mm -hmm. This place is one bad day away from becoming Omega. Huh. Interesting. It's kind of what Garrus said. Did I... I don't I'm think looking there for was the best anything... Tech upgrades yeah. You have. Ah. Of course. Okay. Look on the stock market, dead piling up. Perhaps you need to explore their options. There's just so much talking going on. Is this the club? I don't want to go to the club. Yeah, it is. Um. Gateway, personal defense, memories of aliens. What's on that? So I have to go underneath. Is the right career option oh, look. You. At least they're moving a little bit. Oh, I guess it says eternity right there. I didn't notice that. Alright, good to know. Only thing over there is the bar. Oh my gosh, shut up, man! We've heard you before! Too, but I was listening to the. I was listening to the. Oh no, not the wrong. Okay. I was listening to the report. Navacorp has been implicated in a massive financial scandal. Hey, shut up! Oh my gosh! It's not. It's not even this bad on the freaking Citadel. I feel like I can't talk. These are the terminus systems. Oh yeah, I would have to say before I did that. Going to try and make it as a commando? Why not? Every Asari has biotics. Might as well use them, right? Damn, that's a hell of a sniper rifle. If you say so. <laughs> no, I don't want that. Uh, did I already buy I think I already. I must have already bought it. Oh, there's oh, this! Blue rose of Ilium. Yeah. Let your roots dig deep into the hot soil of Tachanka. <laughs> Let our scorching sun and sheeting rain turn your supple beauty into strength. For if our love is to survive, it must grow thorns to pierce the hand <laughs> of any that would uproot it. You know, it's not, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Ooh, model shaped. Ha! <laughs> All right, let's talk to her. What do you want? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that damn Krogan's love poems are getting on my nerves. <laughs> Krogan's reading those love poems to get your attention? His name is Char. Yeah. We're kind I of love dating, her face but, paint. Well, Let we're on a break. And he's trying to show me how sensitive he is by, you know, wooing me. It's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem common for a sorry to date Krogan. It's not. What brought you two together? He's a fun guy. Really smart. Especially for a Krogan. And he's got a good job as a transport technician. <laughs> it's fun to join a mercenary guild or dance at bars for a few centuries, but eventually you hit the matron stage. So you she's know? transitioning. Then you get your back tattoo removed, let your scalp go back to its natural blue, and settle down with someone dependable. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, ah. <laughs> so why are the two of you on a break? He's serious. Serious, as in talking about kids. Char is a great guy to date, but for something permanent... He's trying so hard. Long lives. It's not like dating a human where you just stick it out for a century till they die. Uh-huh. no offense. It made me wonder if he really likes me. Or if he just wants kids. He can't have them any other way, you know. Because of the genophage. That sounds like a question you should ask him. I did. I don't think you realize that our kids would always have been Asari. Yeah. Non Asari don't always get that we're not taking alien DNA. We're just using it to randomize some of the genetic information. Anyway, Char was quiet for a long time. Then he said that he'd love our girls no matter what color they were. <laughs> See, he gets it. He didn't just say kids, he said girls. I kind of like freaking want to cry. Not it's so blood sweet. Rage, but with love. And I you stand can just, here. You can just hear him back there. To 
offer you. Uh, I hope this is. You need to talk to your boyfriend. He's just gonna keep shouting poetry until you. <laughs> While she's at I work. I know, but it's tough. I like him a lot. Hell, I love him, but I don't know if he's permanent bond material. Yeah. And then that's a big deal, you know? It, it's like, yeah, you can even love somebody, but are they necessarily going to be the best person you want to spend centuries with in her case? Like, I don't know, you know? But he seems like, especially for a Krogan, he seems like a really good guy. I mean, not many Krogan, especially if he's, he's like a tech guy or whatever, like, that's a good, that's a good job. Like, it's a kind of a different job for a Krogan. He's not like being a mercenary. He's like... Doing something that, like, you know, with machinery and stuff, and when I don't, you know, it's like part of me is like, maybe I should not get involved, but you know, it's like, why not? Take a leap, see how it goes if you need to, you know. Look at him; he's obviously crazy about you. Is he? I mean, what if he just wants to have kids? Am I just his baby-making machine? He said I wasn't, but if he said that, then you either trust him, so you have nothing to worry about, or you don't. Shepard's amazing. Decided. I, I guess I hadn't thought about it like that. And I do trust him, if he said it. I'm going to talk to him. Here, I've given you a discount. <laughs> for helping Thanks with for your love help. problems. This random stranger here helping with your love problems. It's just, this was so funny to me the first time it happened. I was like, I was like, what? Are you just going to let me, like, forget? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I have never seen him do that before. I'm about to faint, Thane. Like, yeah, I'm not, I can't look at you right now. Like, Jesus, a freaking wheeze. Jeez, the, stop, I can't. You can't be in my screen or I'm going to have a cow. But, I don't know. It was just funny that that was a thing. You could just, like, I know sometimes you get involved in, like, random things that happen. But, like, it, it happens a lot in video games. But still, it's kind of just like, whoa. <laughs> like, but I guess it's, it's nice to get an outside opinion, you know, like somebody who's like looking at it very objectively, you know. So, because it's like I don't know either what one about of you. A fish? She loves the garden. We could add a pond. She doesn't need a fish, Dad. Oh! <laughs> oh my gosh! I didn't realize that. Oh my gosh! Freaking us, an Asari and Solarian pairing. You don't see that very often either. I've actually been kind of curious if that happened often or if it happened at all. I mean, I knew it had to happen, but I've never seen it. That was so cute. <laughs> well, because um, that has to be super different for a Solarian because I don't think they have a sex drive at all. Um, but I guess they can feel attraction for it. I don't know how that works. I mean, for them, it's all very clinical because they just lay the eggs and you fertilize them, you know? But for a Solarian to have an Asari daughter, plus because uh, Solarian daughters are kept to the home worlds, you know? It's, and there's not many of them. But that's really cool. That's so cute. Yeah, give me, give me that. And uh, freaking... Six, 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 no. I must have already it's bought just, the thingies. We're looking for weapons. Shouldn't you be taking this seriously? Hey, I'm 60 years old and finally out of my parents' house. And Eclipse girls never lack for, um, company. <laughs> you could get killed. What about you? I'm almost 20. My genetic stats are average and my clan has little political power. For a good reproduction contract, I'll need money. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. I don't think I've quite listened to that all the way. I don't I don't know exactly where that terminal goes. I don't know. That still sounds like an awful thing to legalize. Maybe it's right there. Is it right there? It's legally required. Nah. So consider it a way to weed out the people too stupid to know their limits. Nah. Sometimes you say these things and I don't <laughs> I know. Have this. Maybe it's because you had a Batarian father. <laughs> you're pulling that on me? My father was an excellent caretaker. <laughs> and you're, you're the word you're looking for oh. is pure blood. Ooh, oh man. At least you know, she the pure blood was the one to bring up the Batarian parentage, but at least the Batarian parentage girl was kind of stuttering on the pure blood thing, but she kind of like she instigated that. She can't be offended by it, you know what I mean? Um, but okay, I guess I'll call it here. I'm not sure exactly how this is gonna 
edit together, but I'm sure it'll be beautiful and lovely and wonderful. But we'll finish. There's a couple. I saw there's a there's a couple people over there we need to talk to. We can buy star charts up there. Um, I think this person doesn't really do anything, but we'll uh, we'll talk to him just in case. Um, but thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, feel free to let me know what you think in the comments and whatnot. Uh, it's good. It's all good. <laughs> I just hope you guys seem to be enjoying it. So so I'm glad. I just I hope I'm not playing it too sporadically. That makes me makes me a little nervous, but I'm. Hoping we'll slow down a bit now uh, and get things really, get kind of going on like exploring and stuff, which I haven't done much of in Mass Effect 2. So, um, anyway, thank you guys again for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.